Uh, welcome to another session of uh, STEP. This is the third session and uh, today uh, we're gonna be a bit more clinically oriented. So I'm gonna discuss a case report and then subsequently uh, we'll talk about the dorsal scapular nerve um, which was the actual problem in this case. So the faculty of the course, as always, is uh, Dr. Ashish Shetty, Dr. Puneet Sharma, and me, Dr. Amod Manusha. So um, just starting with the case report, um, we've got a 44-year-old IT professional who's got a pretty sedentary lifestyle. He presented to the pain clinic uh, with a three-year history of uh, gradual onset interscapular pain. Uh, he described the pain as burning in character, and it was mainly over the left-hand side. And gradually over the years, the severity and of this pain has been uh, increasing. So hence, he presented to the pain clinic. Uh, he says the worst pain is located over the inferior angle of the scapula. And he's otherwise uh, fit and well with no other health issues apart from having a slightly raised BMI. Uh, over the years, he's visited numerous uh, specialists and um, tried um, physiotherapy. Uh, and medications including anti-inflammatory and neuropathic medications but unfortunately um, none of them had made a significant difference. So he's also had uh, quite a few investigations done uh, which included routine blood tests uh, and uh, vitamin D and B12 levels and uh, these were within normal limits and again um, he had a, uh, a he had a cervical and a thoracic MRI which did not show any significant uh, findings or reasons for him having for having this pain. Um, the slightly um, odd thing about his history was he used to say there's a spot in the back on the left hand side close to the scapula uh, which when pressed gives him pain relief and his uh, he had two children and they were they used to play with this spot and they used to call it daddy's on and off button. So that's something which, uh, which I've remembered for a very long time. Um, anyway, so, so when I first saw him, I couldn't put a finger on what's wrong, but there were a list of differentials which were going through my head, um, including myofascial pain. Uh, could this pain be coming from any of the joints in the thorax, including the costovertebral joints or the costotransverse joints um, or the facet joints? Um, so just just on this point, the costal transfers and the costal vertebral joints are often not looked at as source of pain, and you need to be aware of this uh, that these joints can also become uh, painful, and hence um, explore specifically if you are getting pain in this region. Uh, explore specifically these joints in terms of uh, getting the MRI reviewed and seeing if the actual pathology can be in any of these joints. So um, cervical so facets, as we all know, the pain can radiate down into the interscapular region, especially from the uh, lower cervical facets. Uh, could this be a radicular pain? Not sure. Uh, it did seem like burning uh, kind of pain, uh, which can be typical of um, nerve type of pain. So. Um, so all these things were going through my head, uh, but I couldn't actually put a finger on what's wrong with it because based on the investigations and the history and the examination findings. So what I decided was I decided to take it to the MDT meeting uh, to see if we can all scratch our heads together to actually uh, help this guy. Uh, what I haven't mentioned as yet is the exam findings, uh, but I will um, talk about them in the later section. So uh, eventually, uh, with the MDT uh, discussions and everything, we uh, there was a suspicion that this could actually be a problem of the dorsal scapular nerve. Uh, so hence, we're going to talk about the dorsal scapular nerve a little bit more in detail. So the dorsal scapular nerve it originates uh, from most often from uh, C5 uh, ventral ramus. Um, it can often share a common trunk with long thoracic nerve. Uh, and sometimes it receives um, uh, inputs from C4 or other cervical levels as well. So uh, the highlighted bit over here, uh, which is in pink, this shows the path of the long thoracic, sorry, the dorsal scapular nerve, uh, which you can see is originating from C5 nerve root over there, and then going posteriorly and then towards the middle border of the scapula, and travel, this travels then along the middle border of the scapula. 
on the other side of the image are highlighted the muscles which it can supply or be closely related to so this muscle over there is the levator scapular muscle uh, the one below that is the rhomboid both of them are rhomboid minor and major so there are two muscles rhomboids over there so this is supplied uh, by the these muscles are supplied by the dorsal scapular nerve and hence when we are trying to locate the nerve and if we are using a nerve stimulator this these this is the area we will be looking for uh, any contractions uh, so this figure just shows that this nerve actually travels through the muscle which is over here which is the middle scalene muscle uh, and often this can be a site of entrapment so we we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail soon so um, so this uh, nerve travels in uh, close relation to the medial border of the scapula and um, there is a blood vessel which accompanies uh, the nerve as well so if you were to look at this side this the one in the red is actually the blood vessel and if you were looking on this side the one in the pink is actually the nerve so the artery which is accompanying the nerve is the dorsal scapular artery it's a branch from the transverse cervical uh, artery and this can often serve as a landmark or um, an, uh, or a point or this can often serve as a landmark to help us identify uh, where the nerve uh, might be uh, so moving on so the common site of entrapment of the dorsal scapular nerve is um, either the scalene muscles or the rhomboids now people who engage in a lot of overhead work uh, or overhead sports the middle scalene can specifically uh, be hypertrophied and this could become a source of entrapment of the nerve apart from that trauma can also contribute to the to the entrapment or the injury of the nerve and as this figure shows uh, the pain actually you experience would be along the medial border of the uh, the scapula uh, but again it's not uncommon for the nerve um, to present as pain uh, in the neck area and along the lateral aspect of the arm and even the forearm uh, sometimes you even see the pain radiating anteriorly towards the T4 sternocostal junction so the presentation can be quite uh, varied uh, it's slightly more common in women uh, the pain can be either dull aching sensation or it can be a burning sensation and sometimes people would also complain of uh, itching in the same area um, other thing which you can find in the presentation is um, ill-defined shoulder dysfunction uh, specifically, uh, when they when when the patient is trying to abduct the arm, there might be weakness, and if you look for winging of the scapula, then you might see the inferomedial aspect becomes more prominent. Like if when you're testing for winging of scapula in long thoracic nerve, so you would see uh, winging of the whole medial aspect. Uh, but in this case, if it's the dorsal scapula nerve, you would just see winging or prominence of the inferior. Um, kind of angle of scapula uh, and the inferior border so uh, this is where the pain would uh, normally present uh, this area marked uh, would be generally the most severe spot for the patient um, apart from this uh, there might be weakness and atrophy of the levator and the rhomboid muscles so this is something you can test with the electrophysiological tests and also on the mri um, this is something you'll have to go and ask your radiologist to comment on uh, because normally unless the difference is marked this area is not something which people would be specifically focusing or looking at so um it's also important to rule out other conditions which may present similarly when you are kind of uh, thinking of this uh, diagnosis uh, of dorsal scapular nerve entrapment. So this is uh, a paper where they looked at patients who were presenting with dorsal scapular nerve entrapment kind of symptoms and they did electrophysiological studies to find almost 50% of them showed uh, abnormal abnormalities consistent with the dorsal scapular nerve lesion 
uh, or problem and they could pick that up electro with by electrophysiological studies uh, this is another one uh, which uh, with, where, where a patient uh, was having interscalene block and later um, complained of symptoms which were consistent with dorsal scapular nerve injury and for all the anesthetists who, who do interscalene uh, block ultrasound guided uh, this is something they should be mindful of and they should be specifically looking uh, to for for this nerve and try and make making sure that this is not in their path uh, when they are doing the block so, so they don't accidentally injure the nerve while doing the block so this is a, a nerve stimulator which i use for doing the block uh, this is the probe orientation how i hold the probe uh, when you're scanning for the dorsal scapular nerve, um, essentially you are scanning the same way as you would for an interscalene block. I normally like to start from the supraclavicular area and identify the brachial plexus and then track it upwards uh, till I reach the interscalene groove and I can clearly identify the middle scalene um, nerve sorry middle scale middle scalene muscle and then I try and identify or look for the um, the dorsal scapular and the long thoracic nerve uh, in the area of middle scalene so this is a picture where you can clearly see um, the interscalene uh, groove uh, with the nerve roots uh, so this side of the picture is uh, more medial and this end of the picture is lateral so you've got the anterior scalene in this area interscalene muscle you've got the interscalene groove in the middle and then you have the middle scalene muscle so you can clearly see uh, there is a structure over there and this is the dorsal scapular nerve and there's a structure at the lower end which is a long thoracic nerve uh, and like what we talked about before if you're doing an interscalene block most often the needle would come from the lateral to the medial end so from here going towards uh, the interscale to interscalene groove and this is uh, you can see actually your dorsal scapular nerve may be actually in your path so that's something to be mindful of uh, sometimes it's not easy to identify the nerve and that is um, that is where a nerve stimulator can come really handy so um, I've got a few images which I have clicked um, using uh, one of the basic ultrasound machines so there's nothing fancy and you should be all be able to replicate this so um, what I've got in this image is uh, this is the interscalene groove we have got so the anterior scalene muscle would be over here and the middle scalene muscle is actually over here this one and uh, these are the nerve trunks uh, sorry the the cervical nerve roots if you can see them over there and the interscalene groove and this is your dorsal scapular nerve which you can see very clearly in this image so this is another image uh, similar exactly dorsal scapular nerve the interscalene groove with the nerve roots the middle scalene muscle and this bit is the anterior scalene muscle okay uh, this is another one uh, where you can see the interscalene groove over here and this actually red dot is just below the nerve uh, so this nerve this is the nerve dorsal scapular nerve over here great so the key points um, whenever you're encountering similar patients always uh, rule out any senior causes serious causes um, you have to be aware of the condition and that's how you can diagnose it uh, that's the first step to diagnosing a problem and when you are suspicious that it might be dorsal scapular nerve um, entrapment uh, consider a diagnostic block because that can help you um, kind of reliably uh, diagnose whether this is the problem or not so um, thank you once again uh, for listening to me and i hope uh, you found this presentation useful